We're going to do a little experiment right now that I like to call the radio experiment. And we are going to see if Despacito and or Shape of You is on the radio right now. I'll bet you $5 one of those songs is on one station right now. Okay, not here. Oh, got a curve. Hang on. Okay. Nope. And you can get a little. Nope. Somebody out there owes me five dollars. Just saying. Yo, this your boy Daniel, coming from St. Louis, and you're watching the Almost Daily Vlog. Anything else is uncivilized. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that thumbs up button. Bam. It really does go a long way. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything. We do a brand new video almost every single day. That's why it's called the Almost Daily Vlog. And you don't want to miss anything. We do a lot of dope shit. Sneakers, a little bit of travel, a little bit of basketball, a little bit of food. The finer things in life. The things that make you go... Bam. Vigoro, vigoro, vigoro. Okay. <laughs> now, we have a pair of sneakers. Fire, fuego, 38 fire emojis, all of that. And the resale prices on them are absolutely through the roof right now. Yeah. But before we get into that, those are to the left of me. Like I ain't got to hit it to the left like of me. I the Bruce Lee Uncivilized t-shirt will be available to purchase July 12th, 12 p.m. Eastern Time, MrFormerSimpson.com, 35 bucks. Yes, we do ship internationally, and sizes will go from small to 3XL. We're very, very excited about this t-shirt. We both of us grew up on Bruce Lee. Um, exactly. So that is that. Now let us shift. Let us pivot and move over to the man they call Miguel Jordan. Bam, Nike box. And by that I mean Jordan 1 box. Drum roll, please. Bang, bang. The Jordan 1 Spike Lee Fort Green. The Spike Lee joints. So, I see what you did there. Exactly. Bam. These released recently in very limited quantities. They kind of came out of nowhere. They released at Spike Lee's spot in Brooklyn, 40 acres. Retail was 300 bucks, and that's nothing compared to the resale prices. You know, we talked about how Yeezys have been on the decline. It's rare that you see a pair of Jordans resell the way these are. Yeah. Well, just because the quantities are so much. N n exactly. Look no further than supply and demand when it comes to Resale prices, that's really all there is to it. I've seen these selling for like way over 2000 Yeah. Like almost $3,000. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, sometimes I look around and there's no sneakers yeah. anymore. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I go to look back at the sneakers and they're not there. I want to say this is probably the most expensive sneaker I've ever had. I I'm trying to think what else could, you know, we've had a lot of Jordans in that like five, 600 range. Yeah. You know, Shattered Backboards, Jeters, Space Jams. Before these, Frags, I would say, was the most expensive Jordan yeah. that, that I had. I remember getting offered maybe 1,500 tops for those. These, 2,500 yeah. and even above that. Get a hyped colorway, put it on a Jordan 1. Make it limited. Make it limited, and the beasts, like myself, come, come out. out. you got to edit me into like this like gruesome monster let's talk about the shoe briefly because I, I don't know if there's been other reviews on it or not the first thing that you said when i handed it to you so the quality it, the quality outstanding the quality is very nice very nice very nice now you know me you know i'm a sucker for yankee blue it's right up my alley this is like almost the sequel to the jeters the oh. alternate the alternate right here a little homage i never know if it's homage or homage I like homage. Me too. But homage is fancier, for sure. So fancy things. 
Jordan 1s, when done with bad materials, are one of the most uncomfortable sneakers I've ever worn. I've said that many, many times. Super duper uncomfortable. When they use nice leathers, they're actually really comfortable. You know, frags were super comfortable. Shattered backboards were super comfortable. Man, I say were. They're gone. They're gone. Gone. One third on the tongue. What I do like and what I do think is dope is you got the little Mars Blackman over here on the side of the shoe. You know, Spike Lee, it makes sense to collaborate with Spike. Yeah. I mean, Spike and Jordan go way back to the commercials. Yeah. To way, way, way back. You know, Spike was, you know, doing his thing. Jordan was doing his thing. They have been kind of intertwined for a long time yeah. now. So the collaboration definitely, definitely makes sense. I love the Yankee blue on it. Other than, oh, you know what I almost forgot? There's some extras here. Crooklyn, Crooklyn, Crooklyn hat which is dope, made in Italy. Got the 40 acres and a mule logo, and same thing on the inside of the left shoe. Some extra laces right here. Then there's also, let me put this down, She's Got a Habit t-shirt with a nice bow and ribbon on it. I don't want to undo this right now though, because then it's gonna be all messy. We gotta keep, we gotta keep the packaging intact and nice. On the label, bam, Mars Blackman himself. So yeah, there's really not too much to say about the Jordan 1. You know the Jordan 1 is one of my favorite silhouettes. I love the, the dark colored Jordan 1s with the white midsole. Yeah. It, just, it just makes it, that white midsole just makes it pop crazy. I even think you could throw white laces in these and it would look dope. You know I'm a fan of the, the white lace, white midsole combo. Navy bottoms, the Yankees. The Yankees are driving me crazy. The Yankees. It's been, it's been tough. It's been tough. It's been tough. Love this team. Super exciting to watch, but we've blown so many games. Like how we, I say we. I'm on the Yankees. I made the Yankee hat more famous than a Yankee can. <laughs> debatable. Very debatable. Very debatable, very false. <laughs> I have not. That's but, a fallacy. That's a fallacy, but I do wear a Yankee hat every single day. And the pitching leaves something to be desired, to put it mildly. Okay. Nonetheless, Aaron Judge. I like Dee Dee. There's a lot of great players to pick from. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of young, exciting players. Just got to get the pitching right, and then we'll be okay. So that's that. Other than that, there's not too much to talk about. You know, to me, when you have a sneaker that's really, really expensive, that kind of becomes the topic. You know, like, I just don't know. You know, you, if you have a sneaker that will resell for $2,500, $3,000, do you want to put that on your foot? Not me. Yeah, I, I don't know if I could. I, I, at this point, I don't know if I could. And, and, and I think it just comes down, nah, I, I, 3,000 bucks, that's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. So I don't know. I don't really have too much else to say about them. I love the Yankee blue. I love the Jordan 1 silhouette. And I love that they really gave it the quality that it deserves. Yeah. Just to keep it funky here, if this sneaker released without any of the extras or without the Spike Lee name or without the little spike on the side or without, and just it was just same colorway, just a, a regular standard Jordan 1. Mm -hmm. It would hit clearance racks. No, I don't think so. I mean, really? It just it depends, depends on, on it just depends on the number that they That's did. true, how limited they yeah. were. Yeah. If they were limited in that colorway, people would want them. Yeah. That's what it comes down to, how limited something is or isn't. Yeah. But if they GR'd them, for sure, people wouldn't care about them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. But that's kind of the nature of the beast. And that's, that's you know, where sneakers are at. And it's it's expected. And it just is what it is. Yeah. It's, you know, it's just part of it now. So leave a comment below. Let us know how you feel about this sneaker. Let us know how you feel about how much they are reselling for. And what is the most expensive sneaker you would wear? Say you got the sneaker for retail, right? Because I think this is an important question. Yeah. Say, and we've had it many times privately, say you've got the sneaker for retail, whatever retail was, in this case it's 300, but you got them for retail, what's the cutoff to where I can't put that on my foot? I, I just, I have to sell it or I have to keep it on ice. I just can't wear that. For me, you know, what are zebras reselling for? Like 500 bucks. They were a little bit less now. Maybe they're a little bit more. Yeah. I'm not sure. It fluctuates a little bit. I don't pay too much attention, but then I've got them on my feet right now. So for me, it's kind of that range. Once it starts creeping up to anything over a thousand bucks and it's kind of like, damn, do I really want to dog these? That's what me and you do. When we, when, when Buckets and I, when we wear sneakers, we wear them. You're definitely not, but I'm also not the type of person, you know, to walk like a duck to try to not crease them. Yeah, you just, got, you, you just wear them. 
You just live life. You wear the shoe. You don't let the shoe wear you. Wise words from a wise man. Leave a comment below and let us know what is the cutoff for you resell price wise and where you would wear it and then you wouldn't wear it. And I know of course how much you like the shoe plays a factor in that. So just consider that you really, really love the shoe. Nothing else for right now. We'll be right back here tomorrow. Manana, the almost daily vlog. This is Buckets. I am for me. We're out of here. I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't wear them. Sorry about that. I mean, I'm not gonna. Right here? There's, this, there's an invisible wall right here. It's about drawing the line in the sand. Okay. Um,